So this morning is, uh, you're going to hear a report from me on the Southern Baptist Convention that just occurred a month ago in New Orleans. And uh, I have uh, quite a few items up here that I'm going to have to keep uh, organized as I share this report with you. This uh, is something that normally I, I don't really like to use Sunday morning for doing something like this because I really feel like uh, the, the preaching of the word uh, is primary. But so I'm going to try to weave that into this report. In fact, let me just remind you that since we are a Southern Baptist congregation, let me just remind you of, of the reason there is a Southern Baptist Convention. Why do we exist as a convention? Well, in our constitution of the Southern Baptist Convention, it says that it is the purpose of the convention to provide a general organization for Baptists in the United States and its territories for the promotion of Christian missions at home and abroad and any other objects such as Christian education, benevolent enterprises, and social services which it may deem proper and advisable for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. So what we are all about as Southern Baptists is the gospel. We're all about reaching locally, nationally, and internationally the world with the gospel. Why do we do that? Because that's what Jesus told us to do in his great commission that he gave to the church. You're probably familiar with it. It's in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. And these verses tell us that Jesus came and spoke to them, to the disciples, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That's what we're to be about as a local expression of the worldwide church. We are a local body of baptized believers who have organized and gathered together to fulfill the Great Commission. That's what we are. And so, um, as I share with you this morning about the events of the Southern Baptist Convention, um, <clears throat> I just want to kind of share with you um, what kind of happens before the convention and then what happens during the convention and then uh, how that might affect the churches of the convention. So let me begin by just sharing that these conventions are planned out five and six years in advance, generally. In fact, this year's convention was originally going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, but because we had started getting more and more people attending the convention, Charlotte wasn't going to be big enough to hold the number of people that were in attendance this year. This year between messengers, guests, and other people that were involved in making the convention happen, there were close to 20,000 people gathered down in New Orleans the middle of June. And so um, a lot of logistical work goes into place ahead of time to, to make these things happen. In fact, uh, coming up in October of this year, the uh, website for hotels for the SBC next year in Indianapolis will go live and there'll be a list of hotels with negotiated rates uh, that uh, people can choose to stay at if they want or you can make your own reservations elsewhere, but that will go live in October of this year. And then if you stay in one of the hotels that's close, fairly close to the convention, you can either walk or there's often shuttle service provided on very nice air-conditioned buses. So it's a 
it's a nice ride, comfortable ride over to the convention center. And uh, the only thing is sometimes you have to wait a few minutes for one to come and pick you up. But other than that, that's a good way to go. And that's what Melissa and I did this year. So prior to the convention, like a few days ahead of the convention, they often have an event called Crossover. Crossover is an evangelistic outreach that again is planned months in advance uh, in the city that's hosting the convention. So New Orleans this year was planning crossover events and outreach um, way ahead of time. In fact, um, ultimately there was a website where you could go to and see what uh, um, options there were if you wanted to help out with something, whether it was feeding people or um, uh, uh, cleaning up a neighborhood, rehabbing a home, or working a painting, or um, being involved in a, a block party, or a VBS, or something like that. There were all these probably 30 different events that you could have signed up for and participated in ahead of the convention. So that's one of the main things that happens before the convention begins. And it's usually most of crossover occurs on the Saturday before the convention. But you also have a number of pre-convention meetings of different groups of people that occur uh, ahead of the meeting. The, the biggest and the main most meeting is the Southern Baptist Pastors Conference. And that's where the majority of the pastors and sometimes their wives as well will attend with them this meeting where they receive inspirational sermons, encouraging, uplifting, challenging, you know, good uh, worship, singing, all sorts of things for pastors. There are other events as well, like the one I attend is the Southern Baptist Conference of Associational Leaders, where we have an event for guys like me who do associational ministry. And usually we have a, a few hundred people attending that. Uh, the WMU, the Women's Missionary Union, has a pre-convention uh, meeting. The African American Fellowship has a meeting. The Asian American Fellowship has a meeting. Uh, Southern Baptist Chaplains have a meeting. Uh, and there's so many different ones. I mean, <laughs> this uh, bulletin that we get every day at the convention has a list of the many different groups that meet uh, throughout the convention and where they meet and all of those things. And so it's really interesting that there's something for everyone generally. And then another thing that's a, a, an interesting part of the convention is that there are often luncheons and breakfasts and dinners and gatherings that you can sign up for in advance and some are free and some you have to pay for, but it's, it's a very convenient way to know that when we break for lunch, I'm going here to this lunch in this room with these people. And so you've got different entities like the North American Mission Board has a luncheon, Send Relief had a breakfast this year, Lifeway had a breakfast. Um, all of the seminaries have luncheons on Wednesday um, the bivocational pastors have a luncheon. I mean, there's just all sorts of things that you can do. So, uh, the Sunday and Monday before the convention is the Southern Baptist Pastors Conference and these pre-conference meetings. And then Tuesday and Wednesday is the actual convention meeting. And uh, at that convention meeting, we receive a book of reports, which I have, but I didn't bring with me. Um, you receive, as you register, your name, you know, your badge as a messenger, or if you're just a guest, uh, you can get a guest badge. Uh, and then they give out these lanyards nowadays that you can wear them with, and it always has a sponsor, and it tells you, you know, what, what convention it is, you know, so if you want to save it later. Um, and then each day you get a bulletin that shows you the upcoming schedule for the day. It has news events, it has committees listed, it has things that you're going to vote on, resolutions, all sorts of things. So you get one on Tuesday, you get one on Wednesday, and these are the things you really need to have 
with you as you go throughout the meeting. It helps you track with what's going on. And then there's also the SBC app. There's an app for your phone that you can use to download the latest things as well to keep up with what's going on at the convention. So I want to just share with you now just some highlights from the convention. I would say that the real highlight of the convention for me was one of the very first things that happened, and that was the missionary sending service. You know, that's what we're all about as Southern Baptists, is mission work, ministry, getting the gospel out. And while we were there on Tuesday morning of the convention, you had the International Mission Board sending service or commissioning service. And our president, Bart Barber, rightly described it as the real business of the convention. And that's what we're all about. It's just trying to get the gospel out to the nations and share the good news with the world. So that was one of the best parts of the event. And if you are interested in seeing what that's like, um, you can go online and watch the entire convention. You can go online and watch the entire pastor's conference. It's all there, it's archived for you. Go to sbcannualmeeting.org, I think is what it is. And you can go back and watch those things. Another uh, item of interest from the convention, uh, Pastor Bart Barber, uh, from Texas was reelected as president. He's uh, finishing now his second term this year as he serves again. Bart's done a good job. He's been a good leader for our convention. Um, I didn't actually vote for Bart this time. I voted for the other guy who ran uh, against Bart, who I thought was a little more in line with my thinking about things, but he didn't win. He didn't get even a third of the votes hardly so um, but that's fine Bart's a great guy Bart's doing a good job and we need to pray for our president of our convention another thing that happens at these conventions is you receive reports from all of the Southern Baptist entities now I don't know how much you all know about Southern Baptists or even maybe how much you care but we do have a number of entities that do some really good work we have six seminaries that we support, again, every week as we give tithes and offerings and as our church sends in money through the cooperative program, we support the ministries of six seminaries. We support the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, the North American Mission Board, the International Mission Board, and uh, a little bit of that money goes to the executive committee to do work between conventions. And so we've got, you know, a lot that goes on. We have six seminaries. One is uh, in Wake Forest, North Carolina, that's Southeastern Seminary. One is in Louisville, Kentucky, Southern Seminary. Uh, New Orleans, New Orleans Seminary. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, Southwestern Seminary. Kansas City, Missouri, Midwestern Seminary. And then uh, out in Orange County, California, we have Gateway Seminary. It used to be Golden Gate, but they relocated down towards Los Angeles. So we have six seminaries. We also heard reports from them. We heard reports from Lifeway. We heard reports from Guidestone, the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, both mission boards, the WMU, and the Executive Committee, as well as many more reports. But beyond the missionary appointment service this year, the main business of the convention seemed to re revolve around the issue of women serving as pastors in Southern Baptist churches. Now, why is that an issue? Well, because for years, Southern Baptists have insisted that the office of pastor is limited by men, according, limited to men according to scripture. In fact, the Baptist faith and message puts it this way. Let me read what it was uh, actually amended to say at this last convention. It says that as far as in the church, the two scriptural officers are that of pastor, elder, overseer, that's one office, and deacon. 
While both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor, elder, overseer is limited to men as qualified by scripture. Now, why do we say, why do Southern Baptists believe that? Well, it's because when you read 1 Timothy 3 and 1 Timothy 2, you see that Paul lays out uh, one of the uh, stipulations that a pastor be uh, the husband of one wife. And so that kind of limits it right there uh, in, in, in those words. And then it gives descriptions of who is qualified to be a pastor. It's not just anyone that's the husband of one wife, but they must be temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, all of these things. And uh, it says, if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Also, this comes off of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, where it says, Paul says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Now, there's a lot of interpretational issues that need to be done with those verses. But the issue was brought up because we had some churches that had been found to have employed uh, women as pastors. And the SBC says, if you want to be fellowshipping with us, if you have a woman pastor, then you're not in friendly cooperation with us. Uh, there was an appeal by Saddleback Church of Lake Forest, California to be reinstated, even though they have a woman, a woman pastor. 88% of the messengers voting voted to um, not allow Saddleback back in as one of our uh, Southern Baptist congregations. Another church, Fern Creek Baptist Church from Louisville, Kentucky, was uh, up, made an appeal on the floor of the convention to be reinstated into the convention, but over 90% of the messengers uh, voted to uh, not allow them back in. And then there was a third church that made an appeal from the floor of the convention this year um, that was dismissed not due to a woman as pastor issue, but because of uh, abuse that their pastor had been, um, uh, how would I say, credibly accused of abuse. And this church was dismissed from the convention because of that. And it was affirmed and upheld by over 90% of the messengers that those three churches be deemed not in friendly cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention. So that was one of the big issues. And then related to that this year, was an amendment that a man named Mike Law, a pastor of a church in um, Virginia, brought to the floor. And this was the amendment that he shared. Any church that is in friendly cooperation with the SBC affirms, appoints, or employs only men as any kind of pastor or elder as qualified by scripture. And so this would clarify an issue in the constitution of the Southern Baptist Convention that is somewhat vague. It's not very clear. And these, this wording would help to clear that up. That amendment was passed by the messengers overwhelmingly. And uh, in order for it to be changed in the Southern Baptist Constitution, it needs to be approved again next year at the convention in Indianapolis. Some other things that we discussed at the convention were approving the convention budget for 2024, the convention calendar, and then we also uh, heard a, a motion to amend the bylaws so that when we bring resolutions to the convention, um, that we give the messengers more time to see them and digest them ahead of the convention. Right now, the messengers usually first see them when they get into the bulletin that's printed the day they get there. And we only have a little bit of time to read through the resolutions and see whether we feel like they're 
rightly worded or represent who we are as Southern Baptists. We are hoping that this uh, motion to um, allow resolutions to be presented, I think it's just a few weeks ahead of the convention, will pass so that we can have more time to look them over. And then uh, another thing that was dealt with this year at the Southern Baptist Convention was the Abuse Reform Implementation Task Force was funded and extended for another year. Um, Southern Baptists are trying to get a handle on abuse in churches of any kind, and we're trying to figure out the best way to help our churches deal with the issue of abuse. And uh, this committee is doing a good job trying to uh, help us with that. And then the last thing I would share with you this morning that we deal with as in the convention are those resolutions that are printed in the report uh, for each day. And on this table down front here, I have copies of some of the resolutions that we approved this year in the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, some of the resolutions that you will find down there, one of them was on artificial intelligence and emerging technologies. So how are we as churches, as Baptists, supposed to think about that biblically? How are we to respond to that? That one is down here printed for you. Um, another one was on, on wisely engaging immigration. Immigration is a big issue right now. The border's wide open. What are we supposed to do about that? What are the best ways that we as Christians can um, think about that and what can we do? That was a good um, resolution. Another one that is related to this whole issue we discussed about women pastors is called On the Legacy and Responsibility of Women Fulfilling the Great Commission. We believe women should preach the gospel, teach the gospel, share the gospel, spread the gospel. They are just as capable, just as able, just as called as men are to do that. The only limitation there is in the scripture to that is just the office of pastor of a church. Otherwise, they're free to share the gospel. In fact, I was at a meeting one night uh, uh, after one of our convention meetings and the guy, it was a room full, probably two, 300 people. And uh, everyone said, um, if you were saved, uh, if you were 11 years old or under when you were saved, please stand. And probably three quarters of the room of people stood up. And then the question was said, okay, for all of you standing, if your mother had nothing to do with your salvation, with you coming to Christ, had nothing to do with it, please sit down. And just a very few sat down. I mean, and it was just an overwhelming testimony to the role that moms and women have in our lives. I mean, when I was growing up, I had women teaching my Sunday school class and they were the best teachers that I've ever had in my life. I don't think I would be where I am today if it wasn't for that. So women definitely have a role and responsibility of fulfilling the Great Commission. That resolution is up there on the table for you to have. There's another resolution I printed out called on the Southern Baptist Confessional Heritage of the Office of Bishop Elder Pastor. That's up there for you to take and look at. We passed a resolution this year on opposing gender transitions. That one's up there if you wanna take a look at it. And then of course we had a few others as well. And then we changed the wording a little bit in the Baptist faith and message this year. Um, and we just added in those words of clarification um, that it says, while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor is limited to men. As qualified by scripture, we added in the words pastor, elder, overseer. We just added a couple extra words in there for that. 
So that is sort of what happened at the convention this year. Um, those items are there for you. Uh, I'll leave uh, copies of these bulletins there for you to look at if you're interested. Um, I don't know how many of you receive any kind of paper from our own state convention or from anywhere else, but I want to recommend this paper. It's called the Baptist Paper. It uh, comes out every couple of weeks. It, it basically is news from around the country, uh, from Southern Baptists all across the U.S. And it's a good reminder that, that as we do what we do here, we're not alone. We are a part of over 50,000 Southern Baptist congregations who meet and who work together to uh, share the gospel across the world. Um, I'll be able to talk with you and chat with you, take any questions that you might have after the service. We're just about done. I don't have a whole lot else to share, but um, I think I'll just close this in a word of prayer and then uh, we'll sing our final hymn. We'll have some announcements. And then after, you know, if you have any questions or anything you want to ask me, feel free and I'll be glad to, to stick around. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing around the world through our cooperative efforts together as Southern Baptists. Thank you for um, a good meeting this year. Thank you for the good spirit there this year. I'm much more unified than some meetings have been. Uh, we just pray that as we continue to move forward uh, in fighting abuse and spreading the gospel and, and uh, creating healthy churches, Lord, that you would give us success in those areas. Father, we thank you for, our, again, our missionaries who are serving you all around the world. We pray for them to have a great day, a great week. Give them fruit, Lord, for their labor. Help them to see and be encouraged by that. And Lord, help us here at Emmanuel to see who are we? Why are we here? What do we need to be doing, Lord? And how should we best do that? Help us to be on mission for you right here where you put us. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Rick, you come and lead us in our final hymn.